Okay, so my sermon is titled Encountering God because we've all encountered God one way or the other. Today, we're reviewing the story of Jacob, a man who encountered God multiple times. This is a story you probably know, but I just want to give you some context. But be because before that, we have Isaac's wife, Rebecca. She encountered God. Now, Jacob, he was one of the sons of Isaac. And Esau was the other. Now, they were twins. Esau and Jacob were apparently making a ruckus even before they were born. So Isaac's wife, Rebecca, asks God the nature of the two babies. And God replied that the older shall serve the younger. So Esau came out first, and Jacob grabbing his brother's heel. As they grew, Isaac came to love his son Esau more. It was a red-haired man, man of the earth, a hunter. And Rebecca, however, came to love her son Jacob more. He stayed inside, he helped her out. And it also seems that she never actually revealed that encounter with God, that the was just so the younger. She just kept that to herself, and this probably added to her favor of Jacob. So one day, we have Esau, and he comes from the fields extremely hungry. He notices brother Jacob already has a meal ready. Well, he begged his brother to give him some of that delicious-looking stew. Being ever so crafty, Jacob demanded payment for the stew. But not money, no, no. He wanted his brother's birthday. Esau thought this was a little strange, but he's like, you know what? I'm hungry, and... What good is my birthright if I'm dead? You know, so he got the stew, and he's like, fine, you have my birthright, give me the stew, I'm hungry. So Esau ate, and Jacob got the birthright. Later, their father Isaac was dying. He asked Esau to go catch him some of the finest game so he could make a stew, and so Isaac could then come bless him. Well, Rebecca was listening, and not to be outdone by her son's craftiness, she made Isaac's favorite stew and put some animal skins on Jacob, made him seem hairy. Now, Isaac couldn't see at this point, but this almost didn't work because he heard Jacob's voice. And he's like, what? Aren't you Jacob? He's like, no, no, feel my arm, feel my arm. Harry, Harry, Harry and Esau, get it? So it's like, oh, okay. So he gave Jacob the blessing that would have been for Esau. Later, when Esau came back with the stew and everything as his father had told him, his father was like, what? I, I already blessed you, didn't I? He's like, no, 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 you didn't. No, you didn't. Here's my stew. I don't have your blessing. I already gave it away. No, you must have a blessing. And... In fact, he did have a blessing, but it wasn't a good one. It wasn't one that Esau wanted. It wasn't the main blessing that Jacob took. So Esau was very angry at Jacob. And because of that, Jacob and Rebekah feared for his life. So he left. He fled. Now keep in mind, this part is all backstory. Today's story, as I read before, was started with Jacob on his way. Is, and he was going to his uncle, his uncle Laban, as his mother had instructed. And it was nighttime, so he, of course, slept. It's nighttime, right? Pick a stone as a pillow. Sounds all comfy. And then he took, while he was sleeping, he had his first encounter with God. He saw a ladder coming down from heaven. He saw angels ascending and descending. And God was at the top, and he promised Jacob the same thing he promised to Abraham and Isaac. The land he was on, a bunch of descendants which all, by which all people would be blessed. And when he awoke, he de declared the place a house of God. Years later, he had a big family. He had two wives, of each he worked seven years for them, and many, many sons and daughters. He had a lot of livestock and possessions. Then God told him to go back to the land of Canaan, he and his whole family, so God could establish him in a nation. Well, Jacob was afraid as anyone would be if they did to their brother what Jacob did to his. Well, and also because Esau had a bad temper, it seems. So he separated his family into two groups. So if Esau came and attacked one group, the other one would get away. So 
He was in position. They made camp that night, and he prayed. He reminded God of what he had said. He's like, you told me to go back to Canaan, and now this is happening. Please help me out here. So he wanted the safety of God. Later on that night, something very strange happened. This guy just came up. We don't know how. I don't know if he just walked into Jacob's tent. And said, hey, round one, fight. But he came in and started wrestling Jacob. So Jacob wrestled him too. And since the man could not overpower Jacob, he touched his hip socket and wrenched it. He told Jacob to let him go, but Jacob would not until the man blessed him. The man said, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he's like, you know what? You're not going to be Jacob anymore. You're going to be Israel because you've struggled with God and man and you have overcome. But he wouldn't tell Jacob his name. And then he blessed Jacob. So Jacob's like, aha! And he called the place Peniel, which means face of God, because he has seen God's face and lived, which is an unusual thing, because usually if you see the face of God, you die. So the day Esau came, there was no harm to Jacob. He actually missed his brother. He hugged him, everything like that. And he even said, no, no, I don't need the gifts. But Jacob's like, yes, yes, you need to take them. God has blessed me. I need to give these to you. If, you're, if you like me at all, take these. So like, okay, I like you. I'll take your stuff. So that's what happened. So Jacob had not one, but two encounters with God. What did each of them do? Those encounters changed him in some way. The first encounter, it reestablished God covered, God's covenant with him. And Jacob was more confident, and his trust in God was strengthened. The second also included a blessing. Trust in God was a huge thing that came to him as a result of his encounters with God. Many times encountering God means that our trust in Him is strengthened. But it does not mean we don't have our doubts. Even after the first encounter with God, Jacob didn't trust God enough to protect him. Not only did he plan, have a plan of his own in place before consulting God, but he pleaded with God. It's like, remember what you've promised. Like, God would ever forget what he promised. He's like, remember. And then he wrestled with God, metaphorically, even before he did the, had the physical wrestling match. But sometimes we do the same thing. We make our own plans and then come to him. After we've already, just like Jacob, after he separated the two groups, just in case. Oh, God, help me. If my plans don't work, help me. <laughs> so we go back and forth and in prayer. We cry out to God, not always in the most loving way. God, can't you do this? I'm not even shaking our fists. But wrestling with God through tough things, it's okay. He's, you know, God's, God's big. He can handle it. You know, so God's God. We're not. We only see a little part of the pictures thing. God sees the whole canvas. We see like this little bit that's painted. So we want some more help. And we want God to give us something. Well, sometimes we ask God for something. And he's like, uh, no. Uh, not right now. He doesn't always just say yes to whatever you want. But we don't always want to hear it. When we're worried, it's not enough for us. Even though God invites us to cast our worries on Jesus, because he cares for us, like it says in 1 Peter 5, 7. Just because God loves us, it doesn't mean things are going to be easy. I mean, just take a look at the patriarchs. There's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? God says, hey, Abraham, I love you. I want to bless you and your descendants. So guess what? Leave everything you know. And later you'll have a son when you're old. And then I'll have you sacrifice that son. Just kidding. You passed the test. Good job. And then later we have Jacob where he says, Jacob, I love you like I love your father and grandfather. I want to bless you and your descendants. So... You'll be tricked just like you tricked your brother. You'll work hard for a long time to get one thing, get another, then work hard again to get that thing you originally wanted. 
and then I'll have you go back to the land where you fled and meet your brother who may or may not want to kill you. Cool? No? Well, round one, fight! Ding ding! You now have wrench hit, huh? But don't worry, I'll bless you again. So encountering God is always a good thing. Maybe God comes to us like Jacob's ladder. Maybe we come to him in prayer. Maybe it's like when Jacob wrestles God through the prayer. And I, what I was going to say here is that it probably won't be physical. Just in case you're worried, God's probably not going to come down and rest on you to the ground. But either way, God will change you. Let's pray that when we encounter Him, we will listen and become better people because of it. Let's take some time to think about that. We'll check comes up.